Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and this is the first video of our new DevOps series. So like I told you, we, I'm starting a DevOps series where I will be talking about different DevOps tools and technologies. And this is the first video. And in this video, we are going to talk about the Chef ecosystem in, in general. So what we are going to do in this video is that we are going to create a Chef server. We'll create a Chef workstation and a Chef node, uh, which will, I mean, uh, not a Chef node, basically a node which we are going to manage using Chef, right? So if you are here, I'm assuming that you have some experience of Chef or you know what Chef is, if not any hands-on experience, right? So Chef is, is a configuration management tool, which you actually use to manage the configuration of your instances of your servers and it's an agent based so you actually have an agent running on all those uh, managed servers and that is called chef client which runs and pulls the configuration from the chef server and configures your uh, share or your node right so this is something like this let me just show you okay so let me get my yeah all right, so you have something called a chef server, right? You have a workstation node, workstation, and then you have nodes, right? These are called nodes. Let's group them. So workstation can be anywhere. It can be on cloud, it can be your local system as well, right? And what you do is you push configurations uh, which you want to apply on these nodes, right? These configurations are called recipes. So you push these configuration to chef and chef client, which is running over here, pulls them from the chef server and applies them to these nodes, right? So in this video, what we are going to do is we are going to configure our chef server. And in the next video, we'll configure a workstation. We'll push uh, maybe a basic recipe, say something like installing Nginx, right? And then we'll run chef client or we'll bootstrap a node basically that would be that would register itself to the chef server and then we'll sh run chef client on that node and it will pull that recipe and apply it on itself right so this is what we are going to do this is this will be the part of two videos so in the first video let's just focus on the chef server and in the second video we'll configure workstation and a node so as you can see i have actually launched a ec2 instance t2 medium because this is going to be my chef server, I wanted it to be of at least 4 GB of RAM, right? So I've created that instance in AWS. This is an Amazon Linux image. Uh, and to basically download the chef server binary, what I can do is I can just open a new tab, go to downloads.chef.io. And here you have everything. So inside the chef infra, you can see download chef infra serf server, right? So let's click this and here you can find your binary for Red Hat, Suche and Ubuntu. So since Amazon Linux is a Red Hat based system, we'll uh, use this, right? And you can get the RPM from here. All right. So I already have the RPM. Let's, so now I'm, what I'm going to do is log in onto my server and start uh, installing Chef Server. All right. So now I've logged in onto my Chef Server as root user. So the first thing I'm going to do is install the RPM, which we just saw. So you can see simple command RPM hyphen IVH and the URL. So let's hit enter. This would take around 15, 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds to install the core package, which is Chef Server Core. All 
All right, so Chef Server package is installed. Once this is installed, you would actually get a command called Chef Server CTL. And the next command you have to run is Chef Server CTL reconfigure. So this is actually going to set up the Chef Server. So we are not have to accept the licenses and it will run a Chef client kind of a thing. You can see Chef infra client. All right, so this is going to take around three minutes. So I'll pause the video and come back again. All right, so this is complete. You can see it took two minutes, 22 seconds to complete. And let me tell you that Chef server is not just one binary. It's a combination of multiple services that run behind the scene. So there's an Nginx service, there's an Elasticsearch service, right? So if you do Chef server CTL status, it will actually show you what all things were installed and what how they are running, right? So you can see that there's Bookshelf, Elasticsearch, Nginx, Bifrost, and a lot more PostgreSQL, right? some of the important services actually so let me just clear the screen so now since we have a running chef server what next we have to do is we have to set up a user and we have to set up an organization right so let's quickly do that so i'll so i'll tell you about organization so organization are a way to basically segregate your resources right so suppose you have uh, some resources in your dev and some resources in your prod right and you want to manage them using one single chef server. So what you can do is in chef, you can create two organizations, dev and prod, and then you can have your resource segregation based on organization, right? Yeah, this was not there earlier. It is the part of, uh, I think after chef 12, this organization thing has been introduced uh, prior to chef 12, uh, this was not there, right? So yeah, so organizations are basically there to segregate. And then you have to create a user. So we create a user because to use chef from your workstation, you would actually need some kind of authentication, right? Some user that would authenticate with the chef server. It's not like that anybody can go and push recipes into your chef server, right? So you actually have to create user. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a user. So to create a user, the command is to chef server CTL user create. I'll create a username Tarek. Then I do need to provide the full name. So the syntax is actually pretty funny. Then you need to provide the email ID and you can't miss any of this information. Gmail.com. Then you need to provide the password. So for now, I will just put password at the rate one, two, three, which I'll probably later change. And then you have to give a file name where it will actually store your private file. So it will create a public private key pair and it will give you the private part of it. Tarek.pen. All right, so we didn't get any error. That means our user was created. Now the next thing what we are going to do is create the organization. So again, the command would be chef server CTL or create. And the name of the org will be dev. And again, the full name of the org will be dev organization. And then I need to associate this user Tarek, which I created with this organization. So hyphen hyphen association underscore user Tarek. And again, I need a validator file, uh, which will be used by my nodes to validate with the chef server, right? So again, file name. And I'll call this as valley data dot pen not epm dot pen good so now we have user we have a running chef server we have created an organization but uh, i mean if you may have worked with chef you know that chef actually gives you a ui to manage everything instead of doing cl i think you can actually go on to a ui and uh, I mean, create everything like you can create user, create organization and thing like that. But for that, you actually need, need an add on, which is chef manage. Right. And to install chef manage again, we are going to use chef server CTL install chef manage. But this is going to fail because we are on Amazon Linux and not CentOS 7. 
So I think chef manage, I mean, by default, it does not support uh, Amazon Linux. You see it failed, right? And I mean, I went through the error. I think it's complaining that it does not have, I mean, it does not know from where to download chef manage for this particular OS, right? So maybe they have not mapped Amazon Linux uh, with. So no worries, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go again on Google, search for the chef manage RPM and download it manually, right? So let me just do that. Right, so now I have the RPM uh, URL. So I'll be putting all these URL in the description. So you can just go in the description and find it. So again, RPM hyphen IVH and the URL of chef manage, the RPM URL. Again, this is going to take 30, 40 seconds, somewhere around that. Quick. Okay, you see that it actually shows you what command you need to run next. But before doing that, what we need to run is chef server CTL reconfigure. Right, and let me just copy this command as well because we'll use this after chef server CTL reconfigure. And this time it shouldn't take much time. It should be like maybe 30 seconds at max to finish. can see only 26 seconds let me clear the screen and run chef manage ctl reconfigure press any key accept the license okay so i didn't accept the license that's bad oh again this is my actually my enter key is it's giving me problems i'm pressing it once but it's going as two enters let me just be very careful type yes all right so now it has started finally so you can see the this is actually running as chef client so when you run chef client on your nodes this is something like this what you see in the logs right All right, so you can see it's done in 26 seconds. Let me clear the screen. So now we have a running chef server and we have also added the add-on chef manage, which will give us the access to the UI. So now let's go to a browser and hit our public IP of our chef server. All right, so you can see I'm on a browser. Let me just copy this public IP. Open a new tab and HTTPS. So you need to hit it on HTTPS and not HTTP and advance, accept the risk and continue. And you would get this login page. So we'll log in as user Tarek, which we created. I think this was password at the rate one, two, three. Yep. So now you have entered your chef server. So if you go to administration, you can see your organization which you created if you go to users you can see the user so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to change the password change all right this is done so yeah so now you have a fully functioning chef server so this is it for this video i'll keep it until here in the next video we are going to create a workstation we'll actually use ui to get some configurations to configure our workstation and then we'll register a node and push a, a recipe from a workstation to the chef server and then run it on that node right so this will be uh, very interesting i mean especially for people who are seeing this for the first time who have not much experience with chef right 
So yeah, this is it for this video guys. I hope you liked the video. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching.